Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now when I tested the Ryzen 5 4500 a couple of videos ago, I spoke about how it outperformed the similarly priced Intel i3-10100F in application benchmarks, but traded blows with it in gaming. Today I want to expand on that and compare the in-game performance of these two budget processors. First, some noteworthy points about both. The Ryzen 5 has 6 cores and 12 threads and works with the tried and tested AM4 platform of which motherboards are plentiful and reasonably priced. You can also make use of faster DDR4 memory with an aforementioned lower cost board. It's probably not worth getting if the Ryzen 5500 or even 5600 is only a little bit more expensive where you live. The i3-10100F has been a staple of the entry level market for a while now. And while you can slap this in a cheap second-hand socket 1200 board and have a great time, which I'd actually recommend, you'd need to spend more to make use of faster memory, which makes no sense in my opinion. It's a budget chip, so a budget motherboard will do. It has less cores than the Ryzen, but it can handle any game you throw at it, and just like the AMD CPU, there is great upgrade potential. These two are the same price in the UK where I live, so definitely worth comparing. I'd recommend the Ryzen if you're after an entry level content creation rig thanks to the higher core and thread count, but the i3 does still put up a fairly solid fight in this department as well, though it is generously, generously outpaced by the Ryzen chip. Let's move on to some gaming tests then, and see just how big the difference is. I've paired both chips with the RTX 3060 Ti, a card I feel is probably a bit of an unrealistic real world pairing but it will allow both processors to stretch their legs while retaining some sensibility. You may not see as much of a difference if I were testing with a higher end card but the percentile lows should help tell the full story. The following benchmarks were conducted at 1080p. Cyberpunk 2077 first at high settings including the notoriously demanding crowd density option. This will really bring the percentile figures down on lower end processors and while that applied here too, the game was very much playable with both CPUs. Remember that the Ryzen 5 is about 2 years newer than the i3 and has more cores, so I expected it to do better, but I think this result is still a testament to the Core i3's capabilities, considering it was entry level when it released in 2020, and it is a quad core chip. The Ryzen 5 4500 is finally at the price it should have launched at, and ultimately it will hold up better in games like Cyberpunk where certain CPU intensive settings will impact the consistency of the performance. In CSGO the results were remarkably similar in terms of the average and 1% low. The gameplay footage is just for show really, as the games were tested using the same benchmark run. The i3 was actually a touch better on average, but the lower core count meant worse 1 and 0.1% figures as expected. I'd happily play the game with both of these CPUs, though in a situation where every frame counts, much like in a competitive online shooter such as this, the Ryzen's consistency means that for me, it is the better chip. That said, it depends on the pricing where you live. If a 10100F and socket 1200 motherboard combo is cheaper, it's still going to make for a suitable choice for those on a tight budget. In Marvel Spider-Man Remastered I went with the very high preset which the 3060 Ti in combination with both processors is capable of handling, though more so with the Ryzen. Almost 100 FPS with the entry level AMD CPU and right in the middle of 80 and 90 for the Intel chip. Again, impressive considering the lower core and thread count and the fact it's older. A Ryzen 5 3600 is probably going to offer very similar or perhaps slightly better results here too, and for those of you set on an Intel build, consider the i5-10400F, as that is still a solid gaming choice in 2022 also. With these two though, I'm happy with the performance of both, and I'd be inclined to remind you of potential savings on the used market. I've seen 10100Fs as low as 60 quid here in the UK, and that makes it all the more tempting in my opinion. Ryzen 4500s are too new to be commonly found used, but 3600s are plentiful. A new addition to the benchmark lineup now, which is Need for Speed Unbound, I've played about half an hour 
of it, but I am enjoying it so far. I'm playing online here and racing about the open world, and once again, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, the Ryzen accelerates ahead. Racing themed pun intended. The 1% low is also better, but the 0.1% figure for both is the same. No real issues for either chip here. I'd actually recommend an RX 6600 or 3050 for either of these CPUs, and if you want something secondhand, anything from the GTX 10 series lineup would be good as well, or perhaps something from AMD's RX or Vega series. Another game down, and another solid result for both chips. So let's see how the new Call of Duty performs. Now I actually saw more frame dips with the i3 as shown by that 0.1% figure. This was actually a little more noticeable here and for this test I ran the in-game benchmark run which is a very welcome addition that I don't think we've seen before in COD games, though correct me if I'm wrong. For the gameplay I used a bit of online footage for both just to make it more exciting. You can see by the on-screen metrics that neither of these CPUs are particularly power hungry either, so if it's a lower power build you're after, then both will do just fine. Not much else to say here, given the better than expected result for both, I think. Finally then, it's Red Dead Redemption 2. You know the outcome by now, slightly better from the Ryzen here. Very slightly, but in busier parts of town, namely the sand and e portion of the benchmark, for example, the i3 suffered a little more, as it will do in real world gameplay too. I'm not biased either way, to be honest. I think the Ryzen 5 4400 cost too much at launch for the performance it offered, but the i3 10100F will probably age worse and quicker due to its lesser core count. With both finally at the same price, at least here in the UK, I think the 4500 makes more sense these days, especially considering the AM4 boards seem to be more widely available, and even the lower end ones can make use of faster DDR4. If you want an i3-10100F, then it will still do alright at the moment, and will tide anyone over looking to upgrade a little further down the line. Consider the cost of used 3600s though, and see how much more the 5500 is where you live. That goes as an alternative suggestion for both, actually. The i3-12100F is also a very solid and more capable option than both if the price is right, but socket 1700 boards are usually more expensive, even the basic ones. Still might be worth considering spending the extra, as you'll get better gaming and productivity results from it. But there we go, when it comes down to just the 10100F and Ryzen 4500, the Ryzen is better, and it comes with Uncharted at the moment by the way, but these two options, as ever, aren't the only options. So there we go. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of both chips in the comments of course. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.